In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, Choo-choo-choo-choo. we answer fitness and health questions uh, asked by listeners just like you. Now, the way we open the episode is with our introductory conversation portion. This is where we talk about, I don't know, current events, our lives. We have a lot of fun. Sometimes we mention our sponsors. So what I'm going to do is give you a breakdown of what happened in this episode. So the first 33 minutes is the intro portion. We open up by talking about uh, me washing dishes with my brother this weekend yeah. and surprising my mom. So much she actually filmed us. Pretty yeah, fun. They almost fainted. Then we talked about 24-hour fitness uh, going bankrupt and closing locations. That's kind of sad for us. Uh, we talked about how uh, Greg Glassman came under fire Again, yeah. but not for the same thing. Something totally different. More shitty stuff. Kind of crazy. Yay. I talked about drone technology. Got to fly one this weekend. Can't believe how crazy those things are. Uh, Justin and Adam talked about uh, Vigilantrix. Uh, this was on the, the show. The Limitless Drug. There you go. Uh, then we talked about how my family is a huge fan of Organifi's Pure Supplement. So Pure is a natural, nootropic type supplement. It's supposed to improve gut health and cognitive function. My entire family keeps wanting free pure from me. What's wrong with you guys? Uh, but anyway, Organifi uh, is the maker of pure. They're a company that makes organic supplements, including vegan protein powders, green powders, and many, many other things. And we have a discount code that works with them. So if you're a Mind Pump listener, so what you need to do, go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump and you'll get 20% off all the products. Then we talked about Quicken Loans going public. This might be the biggest IPO of the year. Mm. We also talked about Hertz Rental Car. They had some problems uh, with their shares and stock. Insert dad joke. Then we talked about why fitness is empowering. Uh, I talked about, uh, how, as a kid, how I learned that I'm never going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but that's okay. I focused on the things that I could control, which led us to talk about one of our favorite online coach certifications, NCI. It's the company we work with. They do excellent online coaching for people who want to be able to coach fitness and health through the internet, through their phone, virtually. Now, right now for MindPup listeners, they're offering a free webinar, which teaches online coaches how to build a six-figure nutrition coaching business. It's a free webinar. Normally they charge a lot for this, but for MindPup listeners, again, it's free. Here's what you do if you want to take this webinar. Go to ncicertifications.com forward slash mind pump. And then we talked about Justin building a bike ramp because he's having a midlife crisis. <laughs> you guys called me out. Then we got into the questions. Here's the first one that we answered. This person says, hey, when I'm buying supplements like creatine or protein powder, what should I look for? Like, What are the things I should look for to find good products? The next question, this person says, how do I transition for bun a bunch of high intensity training, a bunch of calorie burning type training into more traditional resistance training. How do I do that without gaining a bunch of body fat? The next question, this person's going to switch their careers and become personal trainers. They want to know where they should start, get a degree, get a certification, or just start coaching and gain experience. And the final question, this person wants to know what our advice is for somebody who wants to become a better communicator. Also, all month long, we put one of our best fat-burning, calorie-burning programs, MAPS HIT. By the way, HIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training. We put this program at 50% off. So this is high-intensity interval training done with weights. So that means it preserves muscle while burning body fat. You don't get the calorie metabolism slowing down process that can happen sometimes from too much of this high-intensity training because we did it with weights. It's a short program. It is intense but it is extremely effective. It's summertime, so if your goal is to burn a lot of body fat in a short period of time to look great for July and August, this is a program you want, might want to invest in. Again, it's MAPS HIT. Here's how you get 50% off. Go to mapshit.com, that's M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T.com, and use the code HIT50, that's H-I-I-T-5-0, no space, for the discount. And it's t-shirt time. Oh, shit, Doug. You know it's my favorite time of the week. Yes, indeed. We have three winners for Apple Podcasts and three winners for Facebook. For Apple Podcasts, it's Liz Mead 16 Saxaw, and at Valenvi3017. For Facebook, we have R.C. Liley, Candice Hutchins, Victor Manuel Ramos. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read 
to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. Victor. Dude, I got to tell you guys a story about this weekend you guys don't love. What'd you do? So, Weren't you uh, a solo cholo this weekend? Um, well, solo cholo. I was Jessica, a solo mountain cholo. Yeah. yeah. No, because... Uh, because Jess goes out of town? Yeah. Yeah, it was just me and the kids. Mm. And um, so during the week, my dad, I, I told you guys, was working in the backyard and doing some stuff and asked, my, right, asked right. me if my son could help. Right. So because my kids were there, my, my mom's like, of course, if they're there, my mom's like, eat over, eat over, eat over. Yeah. And then over the weekend, she invited my brother and his girlfriend, lovely young lady, for dinner. So my mom's like, eat over again so we could all hang out. So I'm like, all right. This no is problem. your brother's new girlfriend. Dude, it yeah. makes it easier. He's been though. with her for a while. Yeah, yeah, it does. And of course, the food I can't <laughs> turn down. Like, uh, amazing. The yeah. best food of, of all time. Are you so still if, getting husky or what? Well, I mean, you guys have eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought the shirts were getting smaller. No. Thick, thick daddy. <laughs> no, no, Let's no. Someone start calling you. Thick the daddy. shirts are, are the same. <laughs> I'm getting thicker <laughs> with a bunch of C's. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so after dinner, we're eating or whatever. And, you know, there's certain things that you don't notice because they're just a part of your family or whatever. Certain mm-hmm. things that always happen, right? After dinner, 99.9% of the time, it's my mom and then she'll pull one of my sisters to clean up. And I just take that. I don't even think about it, right? I don't even think about it. It's just the way we do it. So we're sitting there and we had dinner one night with my brother and his girl and his girl gets up and she's helping my mom and I'm, I become aware and I'm like, well, that's nice. Like she's getting up to help. And I'm like, when's the last time I did it with my brother? And when's the last time my brother did it? Yeah. You know, never. Right. So the next time we ate over, my brother was there. My sister was there this time with her husband and we're all hanging out. So as we're finishing or whatever, I look at my brother cause, uh, his, his girl, my dad had comment was talking to my brother's girlfriend and He's like, you look tired. She's like, yeah, you know, I've had a long day and I'm a little tired. And that made me think like, I don't want her to get up and have to clean. She's tired now. So I looked at my brother and I'm like, hey, when we're done, let's get up and let's let's do all the stuff. And so my brother kind of looks at me like, okay, whatever. He's <laughs> like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah. this is some bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you trying to ruin here? <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, but he's like, whatever, right? He's We've like, had a good thing going yeah, for like 40 man, years, yeah. guy. <laughs> it's going to uproot everything. But he's done. He's a good guy. He lived on his own for a long time. He knows how to do that kind of stuff, right? So. Yeah. So we finished dinner or whatever. So I get up and I start, you know, his girl tries to get up. My mom tries to clean. I'm like, put the stuff down. We're going to do it. You guys relax. Let us take care of it, whatever. So I start getting up and then I tell my brother, come help me. So my mom and my sister make the biggest deal of all time. Oh my gosh, get the camera. Oh, this is, <laughs> my mom's like, oh, I love you guys so much for clean. Then of course my sister gets upset. She's like, you never say that to me when I, <laughs> when I clean or do anything. Why are you so happy that you're, you know? And then she comes over and she had, you know, whatever. And she's like, wow, I'm so happy to see my boys do this. And I'm like, yeah, it only took me 40 years, Ma, to figure this out. <laughs> like, it took me 40 years in a divorce to figure out that this wow. is something I should it's do. total Kodak moment. <laughs> yeah, you know? so yeah. We're, so we're sitting there clean. So then my brother You're feels- like, Enjoy, com- this will never happen again. He feels conflicted, you know? I'm, yeah. like, why? I'm like, why do you feel weird? He's like, because they're filming us. I'm like, so, <laughs> so what? I'm like, let's just do it. Yeah. Let's just be, uh, you know, be grateful. Dude, did you hear the news about, so 24 closes down a uh, hundred locations. I know. And I, they filed for man. bankruptcy. Yeah. Oh, did they? They filed oh, for so bankruptcy. They did. Uh, Boom. Wow. Strategy though. Well, right. Bro, a hundred locations is one fourth of their clubs almost, right? They yeah. had over 400 clubs, just over 400 clubs. Yeah. Yeah. One fourth permanently shut down. Yeah. And I'm the ones in the Bay area, one in particular, Capital McKee, uh, that's the location on Capitol McKee here in San Jose. That is one of the old flagship locations. So I okay. So I was going through the list, right? Uh, Fremont. So when, oh yeah, I was going through the list. Now what? And I was trying to speculate on uh, why those locations, because the thing that's weird is like Capitol McKee was one of the most profitable gyms that they had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it had one of the largest EFT bases. The overhead on it, the lease agreement was so. It was like old. a two hundred something yeah. thousand dues base. I'm yeah. guessing Hillsdale and Santa Teresa are not. Yeah, they're fine. Yeah. So what 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 do you think is the reason why? I have my theories, but what what do you why those clubs? I, in my opinion, I think that what they're trying to do, and this is a guess, but I think they're trying to strategize and see because yes, it does have a big dues base, but a lot of those people either are allowed to transfer mm-hmm. or they already have an all club membership. So they're probably thinking, 
if we close this one down, what's the damage versus if we close these other ones? Yeah, so it it looked to me like it was mostly all the old ones. Oh, Uh, like all. Oh, that's not a bad point. Right, and just because it probably the maintenance on it to keep them up, they get the most complaints. Probably remember how many complaints that like. Yeah, you kind of need a clean club to start with. Right, and so if you if you've already deemed like I'm sure they sat down in a boardroom and said, "Listen, uh, this is how much we're losing. This is the only way we're going to survive. We're going to have to cut." a quarter of our clubs, you know, we're just going to have to close them down and let's start putting together a list of which ones. And I'm sure the list of that, or the the ones that popped up on there had a lot to do with how old they were. That was, that's my theory. Because Hmm. if you just did it straight numbers, I know that Capital McKee is one of the more uh, profitable gyms Mm -hmm. of all their gyms, right? So most all of them are profitable. Some of the greatest uh, general managers, uh, fitness managers, trainers in the Bay Area started at that club. Oh, 505. That, that's, that's yours. Yeah, for, yeah, that right. was your home club. Mm-hmm. You know what's funny is that um I you know I, I was brought up in that in that culture. So were you Adam and Justin too. This is where we started our careers, right? Yeah. We were brought up there and I learned some of the greatest lessons I ever learned in fitness and business in the early years of my career at 24. I had some great mentors, you know, it was started by one of the greatest fitness leaders if not the greatest fitness leader in uh, in the gym industry ever, Mark Mastroff. And, you know, they did a lot of changes. I left the company a long time ago. And I had I thought I had completely cut and severed, like, the feelings towards that company. Like, I don't really care, whatever. But I'm not going to lie, dude. A piece of me was sad to see some of those clubs oh, shut yeah. down. No, no, of course. It's, you know? it's just it's interesting to me to watch the the different CEOs right now how they maneuver this way through this and who will come out at the other end. I mean, UFC obviously taking a whole different approach, right? We're not mm-hmm. going to shut down any places. We're going to just increase the rates and then try and provide more service. So it's going to be really interesting to see in the next six months to a year, like how this all washes out and what was a better strategy. You know? I, f- I mm-hmm. feel like th- what they've been doing is um, slowly destroying the brand, you know, the name. Oh, you yeah. know? Well, they got a lot of, uh, they've been getting piled up. Speaking of getting piled, Justin, tell me you listened to the podcast that, that Sal sent over and was oh. sharing in our forum about Glassman. Yes, I did. Yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. That was holy shit. That was at a left field. I did not. I, I, I almost didn't listen to it. I'm like, whatever. I'm like over the drama yeah. news and stuff like that. All new. Uh, yeah, information in terms Did not of like see that so the culture and behind the scenes in CrossFit. So first he gets hammered because of his insensitive comments regarding the you know George Floyd and all that stuff. Yeah, steps down, so he's already beaten. Right, he's already beaten down. Then this dude comes out with a podcast. I can't remember the guy's name. We should probably get his name so we could uh, yeah. say say yeah. I'll, I'll look it up while you're talking. But about. he he worked closely for Glassman. Does a podcast and basically it's like a tell all. Yeah. And in it, nothing to do with racism, nothing to do with George Floyd. Nothing with that. It was nothing to do. It was basically all about how Glassman talks about women in disparaging, terrible ways, his Mm -hmm. attitudes towards his female staff. And basically made him sound like a, just yeah. a general. He just alludes to a lot more like uh, information he knows that he's going to reveal a bit later. Yeah, yeah he, he in the in the podcast he's he's really vague, like he's in, in, intentionally, intentionally, though, yeah. right? Because he's not trying to drag him with it. But at the at towards the end of it, he straight, well, straight up says, "If you think that I'm being vague because I don't have specifics, you're fucking dead." Well, wrong. and that's the thing. I mean, he's really like putting himself out there because like like he mentions how litigious, like that's like their thing. Like they go. Out after people like constantly full auto Friday. Mm. Mm. That's the name of the, uh, his podcast full auto Friday. Uh, it was shared in our forums. If you're in our forum, you, you've seen it already. But, and when I watched it, it, it had only had like 40,000 views. Yeah. Or what's so. it at now? 191,000. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, flying. It's flying right up. now. So you can go to YouTube and go to full auto Friday, uh, dash round five, um, and he's it, Cleared Hot Podcast. Sorry, that's the name of the, the podcast. is called Cleared Hot Podcast. He does a thing called Full Auto Friday. Um, but I, I mean, I mean, ripped, terrible, oh. and it, it like it's like you're kicking someone when they're down. Now, of course, it's his word at this point. Well, I, don't, I don't know if there's anybody. He was his private pilot for like six, seven years. Yeah. You know, so the stuff that he says was like he said was directly said in front of him or to him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, this is going to get really, really interesting. Is, have you heard of he's anybody? He's not backing down anytime soon, the way that he was talking towards him. He's like, I'm going to come out with this. Now, have you guys heard anything, anybody else coming out to uh, to basically confirm 
some of those stories, or so far have you just heard? Because I haven't heard anything. No, about no, no I haven't. I, I never even heard about any of this. No, this well, the, new to me. The case he makes is that just they, everyone out of fear, right? I mean, that's what he's saying. Is yeah, he it, just out of fear that they, because of how litigious they are, that they would come after them immediately if they tried to say. Isn't something. it interesting when you have someone like that start to fall? That people then start to come out, and I think it's because they're not afraid anymore. Yeah, they start to come out. Yeah, and, I think they just look as an opportunity to kind of make you know the like amends for some things like where they wanted to jump in and say something but they didn't because yeah they were afraid I thought it was a curveball because I, you listen to the first half of it and he's pretty much defending him that he doesn't believe he's a racist mm -hmm. you know mind you he says what he said was insensitive and yeah. probably not the smartest thing for him to say he's like out. however yeah. Yeah. yeah however there's this other stuff yeah, you're like what yeah I was like dude yeah. and now he's not the super record skip and I've seen top CrossFit representatives like these are people who you know are well known million followers plus post uh, about Glassman after he stepped down and basically say he stepped down, but he still owns the company. So we're not satisfied. Oh, I'm yeah. Like, well, Holy cow. He also said- They want to kill the guy. The, whoever, I forget the name of the guy that's now stepped into the role of CEO. And the the, the concern that this guy is, is saying is that he, he was complicit to all this stuff. So he knows fully aware of these conversations, the culture- and so even though a new CEO is coming in, unless some serious house cleaning is done or some reckoning that he doesn't foresee things really changing and in order for them to survive and keep going, they will need, they need to a whole that. new regime. Yeah. Is this going in. to, I mean, they've already, the, the brand CrossFit has already been getting hit. Mm. Um, and then him, you know, stepping down, that was bad. Now this, uh, and it's hard to separate him from the brand. Right, because he's well, it's like he, yeah, it, he owns. He, isn't he like all owning? Yeah, yeah, he still, still owns CrossFit. Inc. Well, yeah. not just that. It's just it's hard to separate. Even if he sold it, like it, it's like Steve Jobs yeah. and Apple or totally. Elon Musk, and you know you could sell it, you could, but you're still people connect you, right? Yeah. Like, could this be the the just the, the last straw that destroys the brand completely? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it would be interesting to see like how a lot of these other CrossFit boxes will sort of rebrand and create something maybe, you know, completely new. I don't know. Like, I don't know if they have the force. I don't know what's going to happen with all that. It'll be interesting to watch. Dude, crazy. Anyway, um, so my brother, speaking to my brother um, earlier, he got a drone, just regular drone off the internet. I've never used any of these. I've never seen them or whatever. Cost them about a thousand bucks, not a lot of money. Hmm. Dude, the technology in these things is scary. Yeah, they're yeah. badass. Have you guys used these? Yeah. Is that the one like does he have the one where it actually follows you? Bro, it, they track. Oh, bro. Yeah, it it's got you. a little it's got a little controller. The thing is easy. My kids were flying it around with no worries about crash or anything. Hook your phone really? up to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hook your phone up to it. Wow, they've come a long way. He well, can fly six miles away. Six <laughs> miles away. Bro, we were we were at my parents' house and we were we were going six miles in the other That's directions. Crazy. You're flying. You control it. it it'll, it'll not hit things because it's got its own sensors. You can lock onto targets with the camera. It's 4K. Yeah. Thing goes up a thousand, almost a thousand feet into the sky. Dude. A thousand bucks. Yeah. This is insane. Mm -hmm. I'm investing in uh, drone attacking falcons. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. Have yeah. you seen those? Uh, I haven't seen those. Yeah. So like, dude, we're going to have these flying all around our backyard and like monitoring and dude, the, no. They actually have tra falcons that they train to- uh, I've heard that, but I haven't seen it yet though. I have. You can oh. watch videos. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. They're rad. Oh, yeah. really? They're it's so great. rad. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you, we were- you know, Nature wins. My daughter and I were on like a, one of those electric scooters and so he locked onto me and it just followed us. Yeah. And it made like the sickest, like I felt like I was on a music video when I watched it. <laughs> Yeah, like wow, this is cool. Say, that's the thing. Hey, Sal's rap video yeah. is him riding a scooter. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me you're not picturing that right now. A rap video, yeah. <laughs> with him Yo. rolling in one of those electric scooters. Hey man, listen, that'd be badass. I tried my. I already tried the hip hop. He's like, I felt hella tough. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I look back, all cool. I'm like yeah. zoom in, when I look back. You know, no, those things are crazy. Thousand bucks. You know how much that thing would have cost ten years ago. Oh, I know. I mean, I, all the ones that we've tried, like before that, we like li literally just crashed all of them in just mm -hmm. some smithereens. Dude. So to have it like fly like it's, automatic uh, like that is another level. It's turning into quite uh, the career opportunity too for oh, people yeah. for people to uh, like pursue that as like a job. Really? I, oh yeah. When Katrina was working for JJ Albany's, I think they had like 
and I forget what they call them. They call they're them like pilot. drone pilots. Yeah, they're pilots, yeah, yeah. and they have to get like all certified and everything to do this. But they, I remember they paid them good money to do that. So they, yeah, they had like eight employees on staff for that company that did that. And they go and they fly all these job sites. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So there's definitely. I couldn't believe the clarity of the video. And then it, there's, you could follow, like, let's say you're flying six miles away. You can't figure out your, your way to get back. You just click on home and it comes back and lands itself. I'm like, this is silly. Why would you need a pilot? That's the thing I'm wondering. Cause I, well, yeah. my, my kids were operating these things perfectly. Yeah. But you still have, you, you still have things that like, so the pilot people have to be able to, it's just like pilots today. I mean, yeah. the, flying and landing, la landing a plane and taking off is like the only parts the pilots really yeah. do. The yeah. Rest but people is are on the plane. Oh, this yeah. Is well, machine. yeah, it's still, I mean, it's still a a couple thousand dollars for a nice piece of equipment like that. You're still flying around where yeah. there are people. Uh, I imagine if you're doing like construction sites too, you got to maneuver down and through the building and things well, like that. Well, I think that. in the Air Force, they have a whole drone uh, department of like, I think they still call them pilots. Like they're flying mm -hmm. these drones and everything. Dude, so yeah. have you have you guys seen the videos of people with drones that they hook up a little flamethrower to get rid of like wasps nests and stuff on their property? <laughs> have you guys seen this? No, uh, I so, have. I thought that was just a one off kind of no, thing. No, so like, you know, to get rid of like a wasp, like that's pretty hardcore. You got to go get rid of a wasp nest. Like what do you do, right? Oh, yeah, so yeah, these yeah. guys will put a little flamethrower on the drone, fly up to it and just poof, and then the wasp will attack the drone, but the Please. propellers will kill them. Oh my god, that'd be like my favorite job in the world. <laughs> I fucking hate wasps. What are you, what? 12? <laughs> oh yeah, it's like, dude, come on. Like, I got stung Justin so leave, much Justin up. leaves mind pump for yeah. wasp burning. <laughs> <laughs> I would get so much pleasure out of that. The wasp hunter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just, oh, die, bastards. You got stung by a bunch of them? Yeah, oh, I used to step in, like, because they have nests on the ground. Like, I used to go through all these different, like, forests and stuff and build forts, and, like, I was very much like out outdoors doing stuff and i would every now and then i'd step in one of their nests and i had one time where i had like hundreds of these fucking things just biting me and i just ripped my pants off i'm running down the neighborhood without pants on just screaming so what's the strategy with the yeah. pants off because I, they're all up in my pant legs. Oh, okay. Yeah, just like, stinging me. You got to get like, them off you. It sounded at first like a terrible strategy. <laughs> yeah, just peeing on them. <laughs> Quick to die. Te tear off protective clothing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, maybe, yeah. Maybe I can run faster uh, if I I showed you. Them. Did I show you guys my, it was like my fourth grade picture. Uh, uh, for school, I got stung. I, one time, I walked past this puddle, and like two of them came up and stung me right in the eye, like right <laughs> underneath my eye. What? And so the next day, it was super swollen. You could, I couldn't even open it. it was you just have like a picture? Slit. Yeah. Oh, I want. Yeah. See so this. I was like sideways. You know, I had to do a profile pic for my, <laughs> for my fucking my my school pic. Yeah, it was the saddest but most hilarious looking thing. They said social workers to your house. Are you sure <laughs> that was a sting, Justin? It did. It looked like that. It looked like I got my ass kicked. <laughs> That's hilarious. Dude, yeah. my my whole family is they're fanatics of uh, of pure, the Organifi pure. Oh, yeah, all yeah. of them, yeah. Dude. All, they they fight over it. So when I get it's there, the of course, and you know this is just I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is my my parents' Sicilian culture or whatever. But it's all about getting hook connections and hookups, right? So <laughs> always, it's always about connections. So they're like, you're hey, dealing pure on the side. Oh yeah, no, no. Yeah. So like, hey, do you uh, do you have any more of that up here? You know, I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Use our discount code. <laughs> yeah, but you know, don't you get some? You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, just buy it. <laughs> support my, you know, support in water. Not support the company. It. No, but they all like it. They well, all that, love that. That reminds it. me of the the billions episode last night. Did you watch? Oh, them? you saw it. Yes. Yeah. What they call that? Visual antrix or yes, something? Like, something crazy. Like one of those like, limitless pills. Oh yeah. It oh. Was, it was crazy. Yeah. It was so great because remember when we were talking about like Adderall, how how you thought you were like really productive and doing awesome stuff as you're doing it, but you you realize later it's just like your ego. Yeah, and you're you just, not really doing cool. You just like, feel like you're better. Yeah, you feel like you're <laughs> yeah. better. They they totally. It was the same thing. Like he's 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 like making all these like connections and thought he had like you know everything figured out where he's gonna make all his money off of gold and all these like minerals and everything, and then he realizes like oh shit, you know I'm just gonna totally tank this market yeah. like. <laughs> Pull back, like bro. It's it's like one of the when you ever get when you're a kid, you know, you you get high with your friends, smoke a bunch of weed, and then you come up with this brilliant idea and you write it out, and then the next day you look at it when you're sober, yeah, and you're like, you know, like what the yeah. hell was I thinking? Yeah, yeah. Cere Thankfully, pure doesn't do that. Yeah. Cereal yeah. sandwiches. This is yeah. a stupid idea. Why <laughs> did I think this was so smart? <laughs> yeah. This is dumb. Hey, speaking of stock, hey, speaking of stocks, so a couple uh, things of stock news right now. Uh, Quicken Loans will is looking to go public. Will open up as the biggest IPO of the year. Wow! Oh, wow and then the yeah. other thing that the stock market is so weird right now. I cannot figure it out nope. at all. Yeah, it <laughs> yeah. doesn't reflect the reality. Listen to this. Hertz Hertz announces okay bankruptcy. 
Stock tanks. I bet all, that hurts. Right, hey. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Sorry. Right. Love it. Stock drops all the way down to like five cents or fifty cents a share. Like just plummets, but then rallies back for five five something five fifty a share or something. Yeah. After saying bankrupt, dude. How does that make even sense? What? Probably because a bunch of pe pe people got out, which lowered the price. People oh, are like it's going to it's, it's going to come back. Yeah, it's going to come back, and then yeah. you're going to see it go back down as people try to realize their gains or whatever. Weird, right? Now. Yeah, yeah, the market's very interesting. Like it doesn't seem to be connected to reality. Yeah, like, exactly. I don't know how it keeps going up. It's when, all monopoly money right now. When shit's going kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah, dude. This uh, this weekend, I was writing uh, an article for you know for our website or whatever, and I remembered. An old story, and like an old memory or story that I, I don't think I've ever told in the podcast. Pretty interesting. So the the article was about Arnold, and uh, our team wanted me to write about you know if Arnold was a skinny guy, if he if he had those kind of genetics, and obviously we know that Arnold had amazing muscle building genetics, obviously, and it remind me reminded me of the first time I realized how big of a role like your genetics play and yeah. how much muscle you could build. So when I was I started working out at fourteen. And when I was first started working out, I was very idealistic. And I think a lot of people, especially if you start working out when you're as a kid, this is how you start out. So I, you know, look at pictures of bodybuilders or I bought Arnold's encyclopedia and I 100% thought to myself, if I just work hard enough and I'm consistent enough, take enough supplements, I'm going to look like this yeah. one day. Like there's nothing's going to stop me. That's the formula. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, like when kids play basketball, right? Oh, for sure. I'm going to be an yeah. NBA player. Same thing, right? So I for sure was sold on it. And I was sold on that for like a year and a half or two years. So a year and a half, two years of consistent working out, still thinking, oh yeah, you know, four or five more years, I'm going to be a you know pro bodybuilder. It's not, not going to be an issue. <laughs> and I had this friend, this neighborhood friend who, you know, I would talk, I was obsessed because I have that kind of personality. So I talk about working out all the time and he wanted to come work out with me. He's like, dude, can you take me through some workouts? And this kid was one of those naturally kind of built dudes, you know? Uh, I was not like this. I was obviously naturally an ectomorph. So I'm like, sure, I'll, I'll take you. Now, of course, you know, 15, 16 years old, you know, you can only, actually, I don't even have to give you an age. If you're a guy and you work out with another guy, you're, it's gonna turn into a comp competition, but especially when you're that age, right, testosterone's flowing yeah. or whatever and i just couldn't wait to show him how much stronger than him i was right so we're working out and this fucker i remember it was so i was so shocked i was barely stronger than him. i could outlift him by like one or two reps and he never worked out and then he can't he kept coming to train with me and he he like blew past me just packing muscle on his body strength and i remember thinking like he's on steroids there's no way what's going on here and then i met his parents his parents stopped by they, I remember we were outside. We just finished our workout. Parents pull up. Dad walks out, and he was like one of the most muscular dudes I've ever seen in his life. In my life, his mom comes out, and she was also a freak of nature. And I remember thinking, like, what the hell? I'm like, dude, your parents lift weights? He's like, no. <laughs> he's like, my dad played college ball, but now he's works on a computer all day. And my mom, she, I, th I think she ran track in high school, or, but now <laughs> yeah. she's a, a teacher. And then that was the first like realization I had that. That plays a big role. Some good genes. <laughs> yeah, there. like yeah. I'm never gonna look like Arnold, am I? Yeah. But it did. Of course, it, it didn't stop me, um, and I, I kept going. And I think that's when I started to become empowered through fitness and started to realize that you know there are definitely things you can't control. I'm only gonna focus on what I can't control. So I might not have his genetics, but whatever I have, I'm gonna work with, and yeah. I'm gonna apply training and consistency. And it just drove me to be a better person. It's, but it's, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, it's interesting. I I think back like some of the like I was attracted a lot to like female athletes. I I, I think a part of that was trying to like create the, you know little my own little super athletes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had this idea in my head. I was just like so into it. I was like you know, and I, I would like find a girl that was like cute or whatever, but like was really good at their sport, and it was like so attractive. To me. <laughs> Your first date, you're like yeah. so. Uh, yeah, yeah. How can much we, can you squat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Show me. Yeah. yeah. Can I see your muscle bellies? <laughs> Can we see how long your muscle bellies yeah, that's are? That's a little weird. Well, I mean, it re it really does uh, remind me of how why fitness is such a a powerful tool for uh, empowerment. If you stay with it long enough and you start and you do it for the right reasons, I think what it, it encourages or strengthens in you is exactly that that you 
there are certain things you can control. There are a lot of things that you can't, mm. but consistently going to the gym or consistently working out, consistently trying to improve yourself, you 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 feel empowered because you 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 know maybe you're big boned or you're not as tall as your friend or you're not going to ever look like a supermodel or whatever. But if you stick with it long enough, you start to say to yourself, whatever, I don't care. I'm going to focus on what I can. And I think this is why you see the correlation between successful people in lots of aspects of their life. And usually a higher percentage of them is also consistent with fitness yeah. almost every single time. Well, speaking of fitness and success, did you see what our buddy uh, Jason and NCI put together? No. Yeah, they put together a cool free webinar for our, our audience for like uh, building a six figure business. Oh, you know, nice. Speaking of empowerment, that's one. That's one. The reason why I like them so much is they focus a lot on that aspect of of coaching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like how to get people to change behaviors and really feel a certain way which as we know as trainers is the most uh, successful, you know, that's the most successful approach. Yeah, that's a no-brainer. If you're thinking about getting in the fitness space or already currently in the fitness space, definitely take advantage of that. I mean, it's free, yeah. so you'd be silly not to. Yeah. Dude, what were you guys up to this weekend? I, I didn't uh, see you guys. Dude, or... I I took it upon myself, and uh, I was I knew I was going to have like a just me and the boys kind of weekend. Courtney took off for the weekend, went up with her girlfriends to hang out and stuff, and so I was like, I want to do something fun with the kids and – I've been in this weird, like nostalgic uh, kind of train of thought as of late. I kind of showed you guys. I was looking at getting like a old '80s kind of BMX bike, oh, yeah. and like was going to do it all rad style. And so I've been looking at that, and because my kids are getting really into to bike, uh, you know, whatever, like just just using their bikes and jumping and doing all this stuff. They have Freestyle. Pump, they have like pump tracks and everything in my in my area, so. I, I I got sick of just like watching them doing all this stuff, you know. I'm like, why am I not doing this shit with them? So I just decided <laughs> I was you're a forty year old man. <laughs> yeah, no, why? Just, you know, like like why, why should that podcast, stop me? <laughs> just Justin leaves mind pump to yeah. burn wasp and ride his BMX <laughs> bike. <laughs> Like, like everything I wanted to do as a kid, like I wanted to like hey, make this happen. Hey, midlife crisis hitting you a little early, guy, or what? Shit, what's, dude, going, what's, oh, no. what's going on over usually here? Like intervention. Usually they buy a nice car, you yeah, know, yeah, or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. No, that's for going that. backwards. You start playing yeah. video games too, or yeah, like if we get a Corvette and all that. That's bullshit. You know, that's for BMX. bald fucking small dick guys. Yeah. You know? yeah. But anyway, yeah. So I, I, I basically I was like, dude, I, I want to build a ramp, and so I just like. <laughs> Uh, you know, so they could do this like in my driveway and like have fun and I could, uh, you know, I could hit it with them once I get my bike. Uh, so I was doing that and I was like, why am I so sore? And, and like, I was like so sore doing all this work. And I'm realizing that, man, the way I work, uh, I don't like, I'm not like on my knees and like going on stuff to, to screw things in. I'm like always in, in a, in a really low squat mm. for the entire time. And I'm fixing and doing things and cutting and, and it's just like. I was out there for maybe four or five hours straight, just like working like in a squatted position. And it was just like, I was so fried, dude. Dude, the video, the video you sent of the ramp, the ramp is quality. Yeah. You've got some skills. Thanks. Oh, it's just, it, it's not like it, a, if I have time, you like know, if like, I made a ramp, it would be a piece of plywood on like some two by fours. <laughs> I mean, you know, like I'd like you kid. His yeah. is like it's got curve to it and it's all smooth. And did you see the video? No, uh, I didn't see it, bro. Yeah, I went. I went. It's uh, a legit ramp. It's like a professional, nice looking ramp. I took. A, well, I. I mean, I, I watched some videos and just kind of took ideas and. God, I can watch videos. All God all day. bless YouTube these days. Yeah. I know it helps, man. Yeah. Now, did you jump it? Uh, yeah, but it was like on one of their bikes. I was broke their bike, dude. So I was like, I gotta stop because like all I have right now is a beach cruiser, and it's just totally not fucked. for that. Yeah. Not for that. Yeah. So, Justin's big old cakes. I want to look. Yeah. No, I need. Yeah, I need to get freestyle and like do it all like rad style. So, wow. Yeah. So are you gonna? Are you still thinking about getting a, like a legit? 90 like old 90s yeah, like, a, like a mongoose or like one of those, yeah like a gt wow. yeah yeah so common. you had a you had a mongoose i forget which one i i had found that was mine it was a gt something that like got a red stolen. line or a, it was a, something like that and then my cousin had a haro mm -hmm. yeah that Haro. was one and yeah. what did you have you had a i had the knockoff remember i told you guys that oh, was, yeah, that was the huffy <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I started with the huffy so i can't say that i, I think out of, out of all of us i was probably the most in love with freestyle and and uh bmx racing and stuff so but i was the kid who couldn't definitely not afford that you put I, the pegs in yeah, the front and the back no and my bike didn't even have the ad option dude i had like the, i was the kid who just had the bike that kids since oh do you remember riding with your friends and your friend sits on the handlebars yeah yeah and you ride like that i had uh, doesn't yeah. that seem like the I most dangerous 
dangerous thing in the, the world. B- the totally. baseball card in my spokes, you know, sounds so it uh, makes the sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you didn't. Dude. Yes, I did, yes, bro. I did. That's the that's the equivalent of the of the big loud exhaust on the four cylinder yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Honda. You know yeah, I mean? the listen, coffee can. Listen to the sound that my yeah. car makes. Or whatever. <laughs> wow, dude. So are you? So you're gonna get a bike like that, and then you're gonna try and pull tricks for real? Yeah, yeah. Like like you know, start small, get in get in the feel of it, do wow. some jumps, and then start kind of progressing and, can and you w- wait until we finally sign and fill out the insurance that we're gonna do here for <laughs> no, we got good health insurance i'm fine <laughs> no no i mean the other kind where oh. if something happens to you and you can't podcast oh, you know yeah, yeah, we get yeah. covered because I don't wanna, right. you know jumping at 40 years old whatever as long as i can still talk i'm fine yeah, you right. got uh, we're over it so i went over to aptos in santa cruz area this weekend that's what katrina and i did with max and I must have seen at least three of those parks. They got them everywhere over there. Oh, really? They had one that had like a, he had a a complete like concrete skate park. And then right next to it was a a, a dirt park that was all for the dirt pump track. Yeah. It was rad. Wow. Yeah. Dude, your, your, your son is, is he just getting super tall? Right yeah. now? Well, we just started the growth hormone the other, the other day. So. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> yeah. I heard that. Well, he's got a mustache? With that? Yeah, I'm, yeah. A, I'm on a mission to make him into an athlete. He we'll looks see. like he's getting <laughs> yeah, yeah. super tall. Yeah, he's growing fast right yeah. now. He's, and he, I told you, he's been, he's been in 18-month-old clothes, and he is... Uh, you know, eleven months right now. Wow. So we had, uh, he was you know he started crawling, what maybe a month ago or so, maybe two months ago. Is month he ago. everywhere now? You fucked in the Do house. No, he doesn't. Cr- he crawls to you to let m- stand him up so he can walk. It's, oh, it's, he wants to walk. Oh, it's uh, all he wants to do. He doesn't even want to crawl. He gets pissed. He doesn't like to crawl at all. He's just gonna just jump right past. He, he crawls right to you just so you he can climb up, climb up your legs, and then grab your hands, and then he wants you to walk him everywhere. Wow. So it's like, and you know, I, I'm six three, so leaning you over. Bend over oh the god, yeah. And I'm trying to, you. I'm trying to train him to do like a like a, I saw this uh, people using like these hula hoops, right? You so I could hold the hula hoop at the top, and then he holds at the bottom to walk, but he ain't having it. He oh, wants the whole. Yeah. Now is his hair getting lighter too? The picture looked like his hair was a little lighter he's got you know uh katrina had really light hair when she was young so my hair was a lot darker hers was a lot lighter and then got darker as she got older so Mm -hmm. we'll see if it it, it thickens up and gets darker but yeah his features are 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 really light he uh his hair's light and he's and his eyes are like a light brown hazel right now so we'll see but yeah no he's growing like a weed right now that's good dude that's well if i have a daughter you know we got a little hookup we'll we'll make sure they get married (laughs) or something matchmaker over we'll be we'll be in-laws adam (laughs) how annoying would that be yeah more of you oh my (laughs) god keep it in the family (laughs) how annoying will that be (laughs) all right first question is from rebel hammond when buying supplements such as creatine or protein powder, what ingredients or value should I look for to know if I'm getting the best bang for my buck? Oh, mm. yeah. That's a good question. Um, so let's start with creatine. Creatine is uh, by far the most, uh, one of the most studied and supported by studies, uh, ergogenic supplements ever. Ergogenic meaning performance enhancing. Mm-hmm. The vast, vast majority of these studies that show that creatine is safe and effective for muscle growth and recovery and strength and now they're showing it's got heart health uh, you know benefits and brain cognitive boosting benefits it's got benefits for older older populations all that stuff all those studies almost all of them use creatine monohydrate pure creatine monohydrate all these other versions of creatine that you see it's like spin-offs it's all they're all trying to capitalize on the on the fact that creatine is effective and trying to find a way to sell it for more money. That's what it feels like to me is it's just like a brand like a marketing way to, to to sell like other versions thinking that th- there's some other benefits you get. It's totally. like what casein is to like whey protein. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. like the, it's the same thing. It's yeah. like the, the little bit of value. It's like you're splitting hairs on the difference of it. It's like if you, I would get whatever is cheaper, purer and cleaner. I think third party testing is something that you want to look at. This yes. made me think about like cuz you know how it's all coming out with it's being more of a wellness uh type of a product yeah. like how they're going to like repackage it and 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 market it like what other terms they might use with creatine yeah with the wellness market what you'll probably see is creatine combined with like four or five other ingredients that are supposed to be good for wellness right and i think that's more of a, a marketing strategy because the wellness space most people know creatine is like build muscle bodybuilder right so if you're trying to sell it to wellness people no it'll be focus energy you know it'll, yeah, be, it'll be like that. mitochondrial health 
You know, it might oh, say right. something like that. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if it'll say that, but it, it won't. <laughs> I mean, do, you, do, do you people picture, read that and be like, "Whoa, yeah, I don't know yeah, what that yeah, is, but yeah. I think it's good for me." Come on, guy, you're yeah. a, you're a marketing you guys guy. Over there. You guys always you guys always doubt me. You always doubt <laughs> me. Mitochondrial I, I know, the biohacking <laughs> space is all about mitochondrial health. That's all they talk about. Yeah. Trust me. They're also aware. I think of creatine. I'm thinking. It. It, I think. I'm thinking of the target average person. Yes, the average person. I think it's going to be more like. Clear, focus, energy, it'll be something like Maybe, that. That's yeah. what I would think. But I would look for, like you said, Adam, third-party testing, purity. Um, if you want the benefits of creatine, just take it by itself in powdered form. That's where you're going to get the best value. If you want it to be augmented, um, I know uh, Legion sells it with L-carnitine tartrate, which uh, helps with recovery, so that's not a bad product. But really, you could just buy it on its own, get a good, pure source and I think you're totally fine. You don't need to get it all, you know, crazy with everything. Well, and else. that's similar to protein. Now, protein there was a there was a major moment for me where this like light bulb went off and I don't remember at what point in my career, but I I, I started like flipping around the label and like breaking down because there was this huge discrepancy. I mean, you back then you could get like a bottle of designer whey protein for like twenty something bucks, and then you could pay as high as like seventy bucks. So there was this mm huge range mm -hmm. of like these protein powders and aside from like the third party testing because i think that's a, a must is looking at so you know to, and and uh, you're better off going with bigger names name brands that are more credible for those reasons but besides that the number one thing with protein is actually just mathematically figuring out how much protein is in the entire jug based off the dollar amount mm. because there's a lot of tricks that they use on labels where it's like you know, it's a great deal, but then it takes two scoops of protein powder just to yeah, get it up. Yeah, look at the serving size. Right, yeah. you, it takes two scoops just to get it to twenty-four grams or thirty grams of protein, and then there's only twenty servings inside there. Mm -hmm. And then you can buy another one that has seventy servings in it, but then it's a lot. So you got to really, you're really paying for the protein, right? Protein's expensive, so. You know, what labels tend to do is they, they manipulate the serving size to try and make you think it's a better deal that you're getting. So the best thing that you could do with protein, once you've figured out, okay, this is a credible source, it's third-party tested, or it's a big name, is to flip it around, mathematically figure out how many total grams of protein is in the entire jug, divide that by how much the total jug cost, and then start going down. And you'd be surprised how actually close they are in pricing. Yeah. You know, they're not they're not that as as wide of a gap. The as margins are small. Small they on are. protein. It's such a competitive market that, like Adam said, if you find if they're if they're literally you know similar, the price is probably going to be very similar. Mm -hmm. Now for whey, there's a few different types that you can get. There's concentrate, which is the probably the least expensive version. Concentrate has got a little bit of carbs in it and some other stuff. And by weight, it's at the lowest percentage of protein, but it's not bad at all. Then you have isolate. Isolate is you know where Just they pure. take everything out mm -hmm. except for the protein. So you're just getting protein. And the difference you're looking at between concentrate and isolate is like, you know, five, seven grams of carbs. Not a big deal for the average person. If you're like measuring and weighing everything, maybe it can make a big deal. Um, and then there's hydrolysate, which is where they they pre-digest it so it's, you know, quote unquote, easier to to digest for the body. We are literally splitting hairs with all of those things. It's yeah. not that big of a deal. Um, to go from one, uh, yeah, I would look other. at a price. To me, if it's if they're all all things equal, purity and price, yeah, yeah. and and that is what is the deciding. And then a, a taste, you know, if they're all equal as far as the quality, the next thing I want is is one that actually tastes or mix really well. Yeah, but now if you're going with plant proteins, um, then there's a, there's something some other stuff you want to look for. Plant proteins on their own typically do not have the same uh, usability bioavailability or the what they will do they'll consider they'll call they'll score protein by their amino acids how available the protein is to the body uh for lack of a better explanation it's essentially how much of that protein is going to be used for muscle and all that kind of stuff so which one is you know more effective for the body animal sources on their own versus plant sources on their own the animal sources just they crush them so with plant sources of protein, you need know, one that's a variety. One. Yeah, you want combinations that complement each other. So Organifi's protein does this, right? Organifi's protein's got several different plant pro. It's not just you know pea. you know pea or hemp or whatever. It's a combination of different things so that it gets closer to the bioavailable uh, bio uh, bio bioavailability. Bioavailability. Yeah. Thank you. Easy yeah. for you to say. Yeah. Uh, uh, of uh, of whey or animal. Yeah. Animal back protein. to uh, creatine. Now, is there 
So I, I was actually curious about this because of vegans and how we know like it it definitely has a lot of benefit for them uh, cognitively. Um, is there is there actually synthetic versions or or is this like I mean does this come from animal products as, as in the powder? No, form? you can get vegan. That's uh, you can get creatine that's vegan sourced. Yeah, yeah, you can. Um, the vegans don't eat it, right? Because creatine is only found in animal sources. Right. But so the body makes important. yeah, and the body makes its own creatine by using amino acids to synthesize it. Um, so you're gonna you're not gonna necessarily be at a deficiency. However, consistently. Vegans who supplement with creatine get a cognitive boost more than anybody else, which tells me that you're, it's, if you're a vegan, you yeah. probably should supplement with creatine. Next question is from Dumbbell. Is there an ideal way to transition from a lot of high-intensity workouts to more traditional resistance training? How can I avoid ga gaining a ton of fat while transitioning off of cardio or hit, this is such a common fear. Yeah, that, no. that, oh, pe yeah. that people have. That's what and, keeps people from training. This yeah, way. they just stay in the same uh, regime and, because of this. And it's actually it's, it just it doesn't work this way. Like f you, even though you're burning less calories, right? if you're used to high intensity like hit training and you're, you're supersetting a lot and you're doing all this volume and you're burning a lot of calories, and then all of a sudden you switch to like a strength based program. You it, even if your calories stayed the same, you're you are sending such a different signal to the body by mm -hmm. switching that that most all those additional calories will get partitioned to building muscle. That's You'll right. be just fine. That's right. It, and and most of what we fear is that is that you're not sweating as much. I don't feel like I'm burning as, as as many calories. Maybe you start to put on muscle, so you fill out your pants or you fill out your shirts a little more, so you think you're getting fat. But more than likely, it's one of the best things that you can do. And I love to take somebody that's been training this way and transition them to straight sets and strength training and not manipulating the calories at all. Yeah, this mm -hmm. this is such a big fear. It prevents a lot of people from training properly for their body. Women uh, are more susceptible to this fear, I think, because they're you know conditioned to, to be more afraid of gaining any yeah. weight or size. I remember years ago, I had a client, Jennifer, who... She was a fanatic. She did. She ran, I think she ran close to 20 miles uh, a week. Um, she, on top of that, did Pilates and cardio-based uh, you know, group classes. Then she lifted weights with circuit training. So she, was, she had always had a problem with weight, discovered fitness, and went the opposite direction, became obsessed. So when she came to hire me, she was working out like a maniac all the time, and her calories were like 18, 1,700 calories or 1,600 calories a day. And she's like, well, how do I get leaner? I can't work out anymore. I don't want to cut my calories anymore. And this is what I convinced her to do. I said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to move you towards building strength and building your metabolism. And it took me a while to convince her to do this. But the funny thing is when she finally did it, exactly what you explained happened, Adam. She gained some muscle. Her metabolism went through the roof. She got to the point where she lifted weights with me three days a week, maybe four days a week max. She went down to doing cardio two or three days a week, and it was like a walk. It wasn't this crazy running and crazy whatever. Yeah. And her caloric intake went up yeah. to like 2,200 calories a day, and she was leaner. And I remember, she, it blew her mind so much, she became a personal trainer. Yeah, when you replace your, your body mass with more lean muscle, it, you get rid of the, the body fat. It, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just hard. It's a hard concept to, to digest. But I think there's this, this old sort of idea that uh, if you sweat, you're, you're burning fat. Like, there, there's this weird, like, root of it. I, I, like, I've talked to a lot of my clients that have this sort of mentality that if they're not sweating, like, you know, I'm not going to be shedding body fat. Yeah. So there's no way that this this can work and you have to like take your time to really explain like this whole process it's, it's definitely something that people like still have now there's a lot of science zealots that will say things like uh, you know two or three or four pounds of muscle won't burn that you know i just talked about somebody who went from like 1600 calories to 2200 calories right she didn't gain 15 pounds of muscle she gained like five pounds which is a lot but it ain't going to make you bigger just made her feel more sculpted and tighter all that and they'll say something like well five pounds of muscle is not going to turn into that many more calories, you're wrong. And that's true. However, there's other stuff that's going on. Simply changing the signal, right. telling your body that you're consuming more and that you're building reduces calorie efficiency. Your body learns to actually burn more calories through generating heat. It doesn't 
clamp down and become as efficient as possible. You can lose no muscle and slow your metabolism down. You can also not gain any muscle and speed your metabolism up by changing the signal. So it's not just pounds of muscle gained. It's also the signal that you're sending. It's not just that either. It's also that most people that that gravitate towards these types of uh, modalities, you know, high intensity, circuit based, hit tripe of training, have been doing it for a long time. Very few of them are like, oh, I just started this and I hear right. it, on, so switch over. It's like, I've been training this way for years. Yeah. And if you've been training that way for so long, switching over to something so different like strength training is going to be such a loud signal, different from somebody who cycles through their types of modalities mm -hmm. every couple of months. But like the story you shared, Sal, that's what's most common for me is that these people that would hire me and I'd ask them how they train and they and then how long they've been training that way. Most of them have been training that way for well beyond six months. Years are all their life. They always grow gravitate to the, that way of training. So just simply changing that to such a different signal by strength training, that's enough to get the body to really move and change just by itself. Totally. Next question is from Eric Lundholm. When trying to switch into a career or of personal training from something else, what's more important, getting a degree in a related field, working on certifications, or just getting started coaching for free to gain experience. Okay, I'll add one right mm. there. The most valuable thing you could do- Communication. Is, well, besides that is uh, uh, getting a mentor. Mm. There, I can't think of anything that will give you more bang for your buck in terms of becoming a good trainer. If you're becoming a new trainer and you can find an experienced coach or trainer who will let you follow them around oh, yeah. and maybe in trade for doing their paperwork or putting away their weights or- you know, confirming their appointments or whatever, just follow them around, watch what they do, hear how they talk, you know, let somebody experience mentor you. That's more valuable than all those things, uh, you know, that we listed. But of those things that you listed, you know, I would say certified and then, you know, start to get experience because a degree is a, it's expensive and it's long. Yeah. Not saying it's not valuable, but geez, for the time and the money that you spend, you know, I don't know if it's, I, I can't see it being more valuable than certifications plus experience. Well, to kind of piggyback on that, I think that there's a way to do that too. If you don't know like somebody that's like a really good mentor or like personal trainer, but you there's a gym where you know a really like awesome personal trainer that you respect and, and you know, hire them. Hire them, spend your money, uh, you know, having them take you through programming and, and explain it and, uh, you, you know, go through that process to see how, you know, the, the inner workings of the whole thing and, and see if they're comfortable with doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they would be. Uh, they'd be happy to get your business for that. That would be like a good start for, uh, you know, at least kind of getting a feel for what, what it requires, uh, you know, by doing it that way. Well, you, you need a, a minimum of a certification or degree to like become one, right? So you have to have at least one to get going, right? One national mm -hmm. certification or a, or a degree in the field to at least get started. But then after that, I would actually say that the experience trumps everything. Mm, yeah. I mean, th this is my experience, at least. Um, I didn't have a lot coming into it. I had a certification. That's I got one certification to get started. And then, every, and then just got got in, got into it, the trade, started doing it. And then as I would run into things, and here's the mistake I think some trainers make is they're so afraid because they don't have a lot of experience and knowledge yet. So they're timid to go, go take on a client, but that's okay. You just got to be okay with saying, hey, I, I don't know, but I'll find out for you. Mm -hmm. And so most of my career, I spent the first five to six years at least saying that a lot and then go back and do my research. So I run into a situation, I've never, and here's the thing too. You can have all the certifications and all the degrees in the world, and it still will not prepare you for every situation you're going to run into mm -hmm. in real life. There's just there's so many variables, and we're so unique, and we're all so different that you're going to have to handle it case by case. So as you, I think nothing is going to trump the, getting into the trade, like other trades too. I mean, yeah. that's very similar to almost anything else. Yeah, totally. you get degrees and certifications, but until you get in there and start working with those people, you have no idea what you're going to run into. And when you do, you go home. And that's why I'd go home after that. And then next thing you know, I'd be reading books and trying to learn more about whatever I was dealing with. And then I'd apply it. And then before you know it, after you've been doing that for years, you're going to have gone through a lot of the similar type of situations. And if you've done your due diligence every time you cross that path or cross that scenario and you go and you learn and you read about it, to me, that's one of the, and, and then why that's so important 
is because the part that isn't listed on here that I shouted out, which is communication, yeah. is it's just going to get you that practice on how to communicate that information. Yeah. You, uh, another thing that I had a lot is I would remember when I first started hiring trainers and I would look for the degrees and all the certifications. Oh, this trainer's got, you know, a master's, Same. a master's. They've got, you know, four national certifications. They're going to be so awesome. And then I get them and they're like terrible because they have no experience on taking all that information and then communicating that to an average person and then getting the results that they need. Mm. So, so, you know, that part is so important to becoming a good trainer that I'd want to get started in it as soon as I can, and then I'll learn along the way. Yeah, the most I ever learned, I'm going to be totally honest, that I ever learned as a personal trainer, aside from my own experience, was from other trainers, other health practitioners, mm -hmm. by far. I had acupuncturists that I worked next to, and I would observe and listen to the way they talked and communicated about their expertise, massage therapists. And I would do the same thing, physical therapists, other trainers, and then other practitioners that my clients would go to. So if I had a client that raved about their chiropractor or about their their doctor or about their therapist, let's say I worked with someone with you know body image issues and they also work with therapists, I would make sure to contact their practitioner, both to be able to service my client better, but also to ask them questions and listen because you know you're in your own bubble. You're a fitness person. You know, you think you don't think you can learn from an acupuncturist about, you know, Chinese medicine and meridians. Of course, you're not going to communicate it the way they are, but you're going to hear and listen and learn. Mm -hmm. And that's where I learned most of the most valuable stuff that I ever learned as a trainer. Yeah, I think, too, that uh, there's a lot of different personalities that want to get into this industry. Uh, and I know myself even included in, in terms of like me being a little bit different than you guys. Uh, it, my, my weakness was something I worked on constantly. So I do agree with Adam. It's, it's, it's about getting in there and, and, and working on things that might make you uncomfortable. If that's, you know, communication thing, if that's, you know, small talk and like approaching people, if you're scared of that, like, and then you definitely need to find yourself an environment where you can, you know, you know, work on that. But at the same time, it does, it does help to have the education. Like, so, you know, I'm not, discounting the fact that like going the certification route and like getting uh you know a degree isn't going to help it's going to help at least have you know that basis of knowledge uh to then convey so when that comes mm -hmm. up you can you can relay the information you've learned to to these clients and look like a genius totally. uh but at the same time like you you really need to to get out there it's it's really important that you put yourself in the environment uh that makes you uncomfortable makes you work on all these things because it really is a one-to-one -one communication you have to have really good communication just because i know people are going to message uh us afterwards about what are good certifications uh nasm good general yeah. one yeah. cpps cpps excellent very very good one uh my favorite the czech health practitioner level one yep. that's a good wellness uh certification so those are ones that i would recommend that are that are great places to look next question is from lean queen what's your best advice for someone who wants to become a better communicator what would you say is a top trait of a great communicator? Yeah, a great follow-up oh, question. Yeah. I one of my my first mentors in fitness, uh, my friend Don. Um, he was a, excellent uh, at selling and communicating fitness and the benefits of health. And I remember, I, 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 you know, when he would talk to potential members or or tr you know clients, you know, he was just very effective. Now I was a young kid, right? When I started working with him, I was 18 years old, full of piss and vinegar. I love to talk back then, just like I love to talk now. And I remember talking to somebody about fitness and he sat in and I did, you know, what I did well as I presented and I talked and I motivated, inspired and used my charisma and all this other stuff. And I remember that the, the, at that point I was trying to show off in front of him, right? Cause he's watching me. So I'm like, I want to do a really good job. And the person, you know, they kind of liked what I had to say, but they were struggling with it. And I remember they left and they ended up not, you know, getting started in fitness or whatever. And I was really disappointed and, you know, the guy, the person left and then Don sat me down and he goes, I was just like you when I first got into fitness. He goes, I'm going to teach you one of the most important lessons in communication. He said, use your ears and your mouth in proportion. I'm like, huh? He goes, listen twice as much as you talk. He said, I think a lot of people think communication is talking. More of it has to do with listening. So I would say the top trait of a great communicator is listening. Number one, it gives the person, the, they, they, they know that you're hearing them, so that already opens them up to anything you're going to have to say. And number two, you don't know what to communicate unless you listen. Yeah. You know, you really don't. You have no idea. You know, I, I've seen trainers make this mistake where 
I remember I had this lady that one time, you know, was thinking about working out. She was in her 50s and the trainer kept talking to her about how she's going to get her body in bikini shape and she's going to look fit and she's going to look so hot. And she completely failed to hear the woman say that her problem was that she had osteopenia. Mm. She didn't give a shit about that. Mm. So her communication was terrible. Yeah. Well, communicate sales is just communication. We've talked about this before, right? So people get so turned off by uh, talking about sales or closing, but really that's all that is, is effective communication. So I'll give you a couple of books or three books that come to mind that I think are not traditional in the sales world that I haven't been recommended before, but I really enjoyed reading. Uh, Verbal Judo, uh, Sway, and Biology. All three really good books in, in effective communication and sales. And the other thing I used to always tell my trainers is, you know, what I used to ask them, I said, what is the difference between a good closer and a great closer? And a, a good closer learns to overcome objections and can push people and they know their product really well and they can push people into a sale. A great closer can pull somebody into a sale by asking the right questions. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of goes in, in line with what you're saying, Sal, is just learning to listen more than you talk. So learning to really hear the client or the person across from you and then learn to ask the questions to lead them in the direction that you want to go. That strategy is far more powerful than trying to push or convince somebody to do something. Yeah, yeah I think too, one thing that uh, I struggled with and I know you know, some other trainers probably out there when they're going through the process of trying to get to the close, right? Like you're anticipating the close, you're presenting, uh, you know, what that looks like for, for the client. But uh, now there's this uncomfortable silence uh, where they're trying to think it over. And <laughs> it, it, it's like you get this tendency of like, okay, it's silence. So that's bad. So now I have to jump in and say, well, you could also do this. And, and you just literally like cut your feet out from under you. Like they, they had, you need to give them ample time to, to think about it and just wait. Just mm -hmm. wait. Don't say anything. Let them uh, present uh, their ideas to you. And so I, that's just something that I had to work on personally. I know that I got better at as I as I got more confident in uh, you, you know my skills in terms of like trying to convey uh, you know the best plan for them. But it, it's just like it's it, it's a process of reps, just like anything else. If you're in the gym, you're like you need you need the reps. You need the people in front of you. You need to be able to see what went wrong. You know how I can improve. And like for me and specifically like that was everything i had to just mm -hmm. keep placing appointments and, and keep booking them and keep talking to people randomly in the gym because i hated it you know and it's just like you just have to do it yeah one of the big i'd say most common uh mistakes that uh, we'll stick with trainers that trainers make when it comes to communication is that they talk without realizing it they talk people out of yeah. getting started in fitness and you probably you're, you're probably hear what i'm saying and you're thinking how is that possible how why why would a trainer talk someone out of fitness? Well, they don't mean to, but that's exactly uh, what they end up doing. I'll give you a very simple example. You know, if somebody is talking to you and you want to talk to them about fitness and you're trying to get them started and they say, you know, I don't have a lot of time. I just don't have a lot of time to work out. I've got kids. I've got a job. And the reason why I haven't done this is I just I don't have a lot of time to get started. Well, the 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 trainer that's not really paying attention um, it, it's going to start the whole motivation talk. Well, you know, everybody's got 24 hours in a day and yeah. it, we have to prioritize our time. And by the way, if you prioritize fitness, you're going to be healthier, which is going to give you more energy. Then you're going to feel, you're going to be more productive. You're going to have more time for your kids. You're going to be a better parent. All true. None of that is false. It's all totally true. But what you failed to do was listen to the person, empathize and work with them. And it, believe it or not, less words would have been a million times more effective because what you just did by that is you literally talked them out of it. You literally just proved to them that you don't understand them, you don't know what they're talking about, and that it's, yeah, you're going to have to make a lot of crazy changes right off the gates to do this fitness thing. When all you had to say, this is all you had to say was, oh, you know what? Uh, it makes a lot of sense. How much time do you think you can devote to fitness realistically? Whatever answer they give you is the right answer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. One day a week, no problem. It's better than no days a week. I'm going to construct the best routine I possibly can with that one day a week. We can totally start there, and it's much better than doing nothing at all, And which is also all completely true. So this is one – and by the way, communication skills are the most important skills you can learn in life ever. I don't care what job you do. Look at the relationships that you're in. Um, you always have to ask yourself what your goal is. Like what is the goal – 
with this communication that I'm doing with this person? Is it to prove them wrong and prove myself right? Um, or is it to get them to understand what I'm saying and maybe sway them a little bit, maybe persuade them to do what I know to be the right thing? When you think of it that way, you tend to communicate more effectively. You tend to not be so zealot, you know, ze- such a zealot about what you're saying. Um, it's a little softer because here's the deal. Okay, here's the reality. If I tell the person who just told me they have no time, and I say to them, "Well, how much time do you realistically have?" and they say one day a week. Here's what I know about fitness. I know this for a fact. They come in because now I've listened to them, and they they honestly believe they only have one day a week. No problem. Nine out of 10 times, the person shows up one day a week, they do it a long enough time, they feel, see the benefits, guess what they do? They make more time. All on their own, just like magic. I used to love watching this. It would take two months, three months, sometimes a year. Inevitably, the client would come up to me and be like, you know what, Sal? I'd like to work out one more day a week. What do you think I should do? Just like magic. And these are the, they would end up sticking with fitness. So uh, communication has a lot to do with learning and a lot to do with understanding what your desired result in, result is. It has very little to do with winning uh, an argument or a conversation. Uh, and with that, look, uh, we record these podcasts on video as well as audio. So if you'd like to watch and listen to the podcast, go check us out on YouTube. It's Mind Pump Podcast. Uh, also, you can find us all on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug, he has an Instagram page too. It's Mind Pump Doug.